We held a public consultation meeting on March 28th uh, where people were able to present their views on the, on the budget process and also on the district's needs. Um, the final thing that was taken into account was a huge body of presentations that we have received for a number of years from, in particular, our partner groups. We are looking for roughly $3.7 million. I want to make it clear that these the things that are in the restoration piece are all programs that we've had. Um, it is only a fraction of what's been ripped uh, or taken from our school district over the last three years, let alone the last 10 or 12 years. Um, over the last three years, we, we've uh, lost eight point some odd million dollars, and if you included this year, we'd be, it'd be 11 million dollars. I'm Rod Peters. I'm chairman of the, uh, the ratepayers. Um, I'm uh, a businessman here in town for 35 years, and I'm also a concerned grandparent. And my question is, um, back to any member of the board, is if you put in a deficit budget, what, what is, what is the, the outcome? It, um, I've heard that if you do a deficit budget, then the government can dissolve the board and take it over themselves. I believe that we, the way that we built this budget in particular is we were very, very careful when we were building the budget to meet all of um, the collective agreement language um, around teachers and to um, find savings within the district and revenue streams within the district to make up the shortfall so that we did come to a balanced budget before we built in the restorative pieces. Um, so that we've left, and, and, and our superintendent um, uh, spoke to this quite, quite um, well when we met with the deputy minister, that we have left the district in a very, very good position in that sense. So um, we are very hopeful that this will open the conversation uh, with um, the ministry or the deputy ministry, minister around what our needs are, um, what we what we expect for our kids is we have till June 30th to file um, our compliance. I think what the per what we try to do with the restoration piece is to, to is, is to add resources to all the schools. I mean, it's, it, it is about electives, which means which means staffing, which means teachers. Um, I mean, right now we have a. Part of the restoration piece is returning the SER to 16.8, which is um, almost nine FTE teachers. This year, our budget required the shortfall that was inflicted on this district obligated us to cut 17.2 FTE teachers. Try to imagine this district with 17 less teachers than we have right now. So the, if you read through this list, I think what you'll see is a genuine attempt to put resources back in all our schools, learning assessment, resource time, EA time, teaching time. Um, what what uh, Deputy Minister Foreman said to us last Friday um, was, he said, well, you are asking for $462 per student extra beyond your allocation. He says, in order for me to give this to you, I would have to give it to every school district in the province. Um, he estimates this would cost him just under $250 million. Um, and of course, our opinion is, is that what we wish for ourselves, we wish for everyone. And the other thing that people should remember is there's been about $3 billion pulled out of public education since they stripped the teacher's contract in 2002. $3 billion. So that quarter of a billion dollars represents a twelfth of what they've taken from the system. Imagine what our schools would look like. Yeah. We're talking about giving these kids a chance to succeed at any level that they can succeed at. And um, for me, the restorative pieces like the IBIT program, like specialist teachers, like having those um, programs in place for some of our vulnerable learners is really what this um, restorative um, budget is for me. And I think we have really solid ground to stand up. I, I really feel that we have a responsibility when we're not providing services to some of our most vulnerable learners, we have a responsibility to stand up and say, uh-uh, this is what our kids need. There's a number of ways that the cuts cost us money. It's like a cascade effect. When you cut programs and services, first of all, you lose enrollment. You know, now maybe you don't lose enrollment to the private system, but you certainly lose enrollment in our schools and often to the private system, to homeschooling, and even to other districts. The other thing that winds up happening is that you wind up incurring costs within your, you know, to your facilities. Our buildings are suffering for lack of attention, lack of maintenance, lack of custodial concern. This is going to cost us a fortune. And quite frankly, trustees are the stewards of these buildings on behalf of the community. And we're watching our buildings deteriorate because we can't do what we need to do. But we're not able to plan adequately in order to prevent it. And the other question is, and there's two things I always think about here. 
They tell us we have fewer resources because there are fewer children. If that is true, why are the conditions deteriorating? And do we indeed have fewer resources because there are fewer children, or do we have fewer children because there are fewer resources? Mm. The other question I would ask is, they tell us that there are many at-risk children in our system, at-risk children who are not getting the services they need, and that there's more and more and more of them. And I believe that one of the reasons we have more at-risk children is we haven't provided the services that they've needed when they, were, when they entered school. So it's a horrendous cascade. It's almost like an exponential increase in disaster which requires an emergency response, which is what I sort of consider this to be, mm -hmm. and it is with grave regret, and it's not casual. I mean, I think the deputy minister understood. We do not want to fall on a sword. We want the damn money. Mm -hmm. And quite frankly, I think they could come up with a quarter of a billion bucks for the whole province. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not saying that, maybe they'd have to raise taxes. I don't know. For the Aboriginal community, they worked very hard to have an Aboriginal uh, trustee at the table to start to um, address issues for all students, but but also for Aboriginal students who um, have more struggles with um, education than um, a lot of other students. So um, what, as we um, have spoken with elders committees and education committees across our district, with First Nations and Aboriginal chiefs and councils, they will look at the removal of um, their duly elected representatives representative at the board table very, very negatively and strongly. And they will look at it um, as a, a very um, serious uh, breach, um, in their opinion. I've been mandated from the Aboriginal communities to carry this work out and to um, have the voice of community to bring it to this level. So to be uh, fired for, for simply bringing forward the will of um, my community would would be a very negative thing. We need an, an appeal that says, you know, very um, concisely, this is what we're, we're doing, this is what we want, this is why, and this is what we'd like people to do to support this campaign.